taking time to step away and be disconnected will allow you to think more clearly. You'll be able to envision the future of the organization. You'll be able to take some of the the decisions that have been plaguing you and all of a sudden they seem a little bit better. This is the Flavor of Leadership podcast. I am your host, Clint Hoops. Together, we explore the unique blend of leadership wisdom that helps top leaders consistently achieve work goals, develop personally, and find fulfillment with family. Let's get started. Welcome to the Flavor of Leadership podcast. So excited to have you here today. We are going to be talking about data versus going with your gut today. So every day as leaders, we are making decisions constantly. Some decisions are super simple. And so you just make the decision and go. No need to do exhaustive research or finding and gathering all the data. Typically, for these small decisions, right, you have all the data you need right in front of you, right? Sometimes the very questions being asked, the way it's being presented is enough information to just make the call and move on. But today we're talking a little bit more about the bigger decisions, right? The bigger decisions that may come to you each day, or maybe your bigger strategic decisions, decisions that impact the overall direction of the company, or it might just be a piece, small piece of the company, knowing what to do and when. Often this is very simple, and you know when you need more data or not. But I'll tell you, sometimes we, when leaders are faced with big decisions, you will just rely on your gut and say, do you know what? Just go with it. It just feels right. So the question today is, is that right? Should we just go with our gut because it feels right? Or should we get more data in some of these cases? I love a quote that I want to share with you today by William Edwards Deming. So Deming, you probably heard his, heard of him. He's quite famous for a lot of different things. He's had his hand in a lot of different things. He's a famous engineer, statistician, management consultant, and many other things. And he said this. He said, in God we trust, all others must bring data. I love that, right? Hey, I will have faith in God, and I will trust in him, and I don't need to see everything there, and, and I'll trust in God. But everyone else, when there has to be uh, something huge that has to be done, bring bring data, right? Bring data to support your actions and what you're doing. So that's what Deming says versus many others that will say, go with your gut instinct, go with your gut. So when, when do we do what? So my wife, she's amazing. She's amazing. I've, I've said that many times on the show because it's true. <laughs> she, she is so good with our kids and, and helping to teach them right? Teach them to think properly about things. And one way that she teaches our kids to think well, so they can grow up and, and, and know how to think for themselves is in regards to food. And so often in our family, you may hear my wife say something like this. Well, what is your, you know, especially the little kids, right? What does your tummy say? Or what does your, what does your belly say? What does your body say? As far as whether you need to eat more food, whether you're already full, whether you, you know, just how you're feeling in general, right? And it's just learn to listen to your body. And so I, I love that. And it's, and it's fun. And sometimes the kids are like, you know, I'm not hungry at all, you know, but then you pull out the ice cream and they're, you know, they're all of a sudden starving, right? And, and we all do that. And, and it's, it's kind of fun, but, but, but teaching our kids to do this. So my three-year-old boy, now he, he has taken this to heart, right? And so he will always be saying uh, lately, he's been saying, things about his tummy, right? So he'll be like, oh, my tummy wants more food. It's like, oh, great. We'll get you some more food. But then he'll say, you know, my tummy wants ice cream. <laughs> We're like, okay, this is, this is going to get out of, con- this is going to be in, we're gonna get in trouble here. <laughs> and then, and then now he's also been saying recently, it's, it's pretty funny. He'll be like, my tummy really wants to watch a movie. <laughs> And so, or really wants to watch TV or my tummy really wants to go outside. And so he uses that as look, my, this is what I want. This is what my gut's saying. This is what I think. And, and so, and so it's fun. I, I, I really, I really do like it, but are we like the three-year-old, right? Are we like the three-year-old in making the decisions in, in our business? Are we saying, yeah, my tummy says, go for it, you know, 
or don't do it. When really we could, we could be getting data to make a decision, right? So there are times to go with your gut and times to listen to your gut, trust your gut instinct, all of those things. But there's also time for data. So Albert Einstein, he said this, at least this quote is attributed to him. I apparently, you know, it's tough with quotes like this. Sometimes they get shared by different people, but we're going to call it Albert Einstein says this. He says, not everything that counts can be counted and not everything that can be counted counts. So it's kind of confusing. So let's break it down. He says, and not everything that counts can be counted. So not everything that is important can actually be counted very well, right? Sometimes it's hard to measure customer satisfaction, right? And we know that it's possible. You can do surveys, et cetera, but you can't get everyone to answer the survey and you can't get them to answer it honestly often. And you see what I'm saying? So it is important to have customer satisfaction, but can you really count it well? Mm, who knows? We try. So not everything that counts can be counted. And then the last part, not everything that can be counted counts. Now that's probably the most important part is not everything that can be counted counts. So just because we can count it doesn't mean that we should, right? It does not mean that we should. It doesn't mean that we should even take the time to count it in some cases. And then other cases, maybe we take the time to count it because it is so easy to gather. You know, in our world of technology and data, I mean, data is so easy to gather, right? If we can gather on the front end, we can put it into databases. We can, we can use it a thousand different ways. But sometimes we get data overwhelm. And sometimes we will take that data and we will use it and skew it to fit whatever we're trying to prove, right? So sometimes we'll we'll have biases in the data and the ways way that we do it. So we have to be careful with data because it can it can cause us to make decisions that that aren't best for us either. Or we can skew the data, like we were saying, to make it tell a story that may not necessarily be true. So in this case, where he says not everything that can be counted counts. I think it falls under that umbrella. Just because we can count something doesn't mean it's necessarily important. Often I remember, I remember in school, uh, people saying correlation does not always equal causation, right? Or does not always mean causation. And so, which that's always stuck with me over the years, you know, because often we'll be having discussions and making decisions in business, or I mean, heck, even at home or whatever, doing things and will, and we'll say, oh, well, this happened and this happened at the same time. Man, they are definitely correlated. This caused this. It's like, well, yeah, sample size of one, not enough, right? That does not, that does not mean that this actually happened. Does it mean that it might have? Yeah, maybe. But let's let's find out. We can't just take take that one instance or a couple of instances and assume that this is now true, right? This is now true. So correlation does not always equal causation. So we have to figure out what to do with our data, right? We need the data to make better decisions. We can't just rely on the data. Often we try to do this, right? And there are applications for this, right? Decision trees. We'll see those. We'll use those in business, right? Because we want to we want to dummy things down to the point that we can't make a mistake, right? And so if we're talking about, yes, a customer service attendant in the front and they need to be able to go, you know, if the customer asks this, then you say one of these two things. And if this happens, then you do one of these three things. And, da, 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 and you keep going down the decision tree and it tells them exactly what to say. Now, hey, I have no problem with that. Uh, that. That can be very helpful in certain instances. But as a business leader, there's not typically a decision tree that can be used to be able to help you make the strategic and impactful decisions that come to your doorstep every single day. So there's a quote that I that I love here by Carly Fiorina. So she is the former CEO of HP, right? Hewlett Packard. And she said this, she said, the goal is to turn data into information and information into insight. So I love that because we were talking about, you know, data and how it's just out there. And we have to be able to put some form to the data so that we can actually know what we're looking at because data can mislead us, like we said, but it can also be an amazing thing that can help give us insight. But it has to be turned into information first. 
something has some conclusions must be drawn. And then we can use the information to make actual insights, right? Make actual insights. Make sure we're measuring the right things. Make sure we're drawing the right conclusions. You know, in previous episodes, we've talked about not being the smartest person in the room. And this is one of those cases where you don't want to be the smartest person in the room. You want to surround yourself with a team that is smarter than you, that knows more about the specific things that you're covering. Because they can help take this data for you and distill it down. And you can have multiple different people that have insights that they can draw. So that way you can, that can help turn it into information for you. Their insights become information for you. And then all of the information gathered together from your smart team, right? The people that are smarter than you and all of their individual pieces, you as the leader are able to take that data, take that, take that insight or that information and turn it into your specific insight so that your decision that needs to be made because you are the leader, you make the ultimate decision. You are the one that gets to take all of the information, all of the data, take your insights and make the decision. So we talked beginning, what's more important, data versus gut? And the clear answer is you got to have both, right? You got to have both. Whenever we start skewing one direction or the other with big decisions, right? That can be a problem, right? We start skewing to the point where we're constantly making all of our decisions uh, with just data and not using any of the intuition and other information and insight that is tough to distill into data. There are so many different inputs that are coming into us as leaders and our minds are constantly evaluating, determining, and measuring in its own unique way. Our minds are incredible things. And so we don't want to get so distracted by the data that we can't actually use our gut, our insight, which is really our mind solving the problems for us, right? That's what makes you as a leader unique and special. It's your unique experiences over years that make you the one that can make order out of the chaos, so to speak, right? Taking all the data and putting it together into a great decision. Are we always right? No, no, we're not always right. But we are right more of the time, I believe, when we use the data and our gut. When your gut is saying, no, don't do it, stay away, right? But if you get new data that helps you that helps you be able to feel better about it or change your decision, it's okay. It's okay to change the decision when you get new data, right? We can have strong opinions, but we can change those opinions as new data and better data is introduced or more context to the data. Context is often some of the most important things as well. I've had business decisions brought to me before where people have said, hey, we need to make a decision on something and they'll bring me the data. And I'll start asking some questions and I will find out that in fact, this data that we thought was so good was biased and skewed for, for very particular reasons for the decision that we're making. And so, so often it looks like the decision is so clear, but as soon as some more questions were asked, we realized maybe not, maybe not. So the other thing to remember is that depending on the type of decision, Often the data has a tendency to be skewed. So if someone's trying to sell you something, for instance, they are going to bring the best possible numbers. In my past, we have dealt with uh, different acquisitions over the time, over, over the years. And so we'd have businesses that, that we were looking at trying to decide, okay, uh, first off, are these a great fit for our organization to include them with us? And also looking at the, at the data of the organization, well, how are they operating on their own? And can we actually enhance it or not? Where are the opportunities, right? And that's, those are all the things you go through in an acquisition, right? And so we've had times where, you know, you're looking at the data and you're thinking, this looks amazing. So for all of you out there that have ever been involved in an acquisition or a company sell of any time, of any kind, it always shows the best data, right? <laughs> it's always the best data that's presented. Even if it's bad data, it's presented in such a way that, wow, the performance was, was poor. Guess what? It looks good when they present it to you, 
right? Or, you know, and even if they lost money, wow, but what about all these things? And, and it may be true, <laughs> but you as the leader have to be able to distill all of the information and figure out what is real. Figure out how to ask the right questions all along the way. As we go through this, this is, once again, the reason you got to have your strong team around you to help you. But your team can also fall into groupthink, right? And you as the leader have to be the one to step outside of that and not get pulled in to that groupthink that can overtake us all, right? So one of the best ways to get outside of the groupthink and to get outside of and and get side of your normal flow of what's happening when you're making a decision it gets sometimes it gets to the point where you've gotten all the information in front of you and it just feels like it's so much and maybe the data is pointing what very clearly in one direction but you're still not quite sure that's a very clear sign that you need to take a step back take a step back and so especially when we're talking about strategic decisions or big purchases or uh big direction changes all of those kind of things you got to take a step back so how does that look that looks different for everybody but i'll tell you this is the place where it needs to look the same quiet it needs to be quiet no distractions right so maybe for you no distractions and quiet that's great. Maybe you can do that in your office. You're in a you're in an organization where, you know, you can shut your door and no one's going to bother you. You can turn your phone off and it's not going to ring, and you're going to be okay. Other organizations, I know that's not possible. Healthcare in my past, goodness gracious, if you're at the, if you're if you are there at your operation, your door is going to open. People people need you, and that happens constantly. It's just the the flow of that particular industry. So in order to get away there, you had to. You had to step away and actually leave. And so I find that for me, some of the best ways that I've been able to get my best insights and get my quiet is to actually go and take a walk or to go and hop on a mountain bike. For me, I love a mountain bike. I've talked about that uh, before, where one of the best ways that I find that I can think the most clearly it's when I go to one of our little local trails and I can just hop on by myself, hop on my bike. I can go for an hour and just think. You know, I love listening to headphones. I love listening to books and podcasts and all those different things. But when I'm trying to work through a decision and gain some insight or to gather my thoughts around a strategic decision, I'll leave, leave the, the, uh, the headphones in my pocket. And I will go turn off the phone and I will go and I'll find myself being able to think, right? A little bit of exertion as well seems to just kind of bring out uh, the best of my mind. And often as I, as I get up to the top somewhere, I'll sometimes just sit on a rock and I'll just sit there and I will think, I'll just try to think through things. And often what happens is I will have insights and thoughts that I didn't even didn't even see before. And often they will seem so obvious when I take the time to step away, get outside, take a walk, hop on a bike, and it allows my mind to think. It allows my mind to think. It allows me to process as I get away and get quiet without all the distractions. We have so many less opportunities to, to not have those distractions in our lives with phone and constant connectivity. And so all of us have to find the way that works for us to be able to strategically disconnect. I say daily like this, not just when you have huge decisions to be made, but even on just your normal days, taking time to step away and be disconnected will allow you to think more clearly. You'll be able to envision the future of the organization. You'll be able to take some of the, the decisions that have been plaguing you, and all of a sudden they seem a little bit better. In much the same way that happens after you sleep. I find that when I sleep, I wake up in the morning and, and things just feel a little bit better. You don't feel, you know, you're not as tired. And so, so your mind has had a chance to kind of work through things. 
And so some decisions just kind of work themselves out or they or you, they're presented with with new opportunities, new questions that allow you to make better decisions. So when you find yourself in a situation like this, step away. Right? If you can't make that time every single day, which you really should, take the time when these on these big decisions to step away, get quiet. So that is your challenge for this week. You have a big decision. It doesn't have to be huge or monumental. Just take one of the bigger decisions that you're dealing with right now. Try this. Commit to it right now. Take one of these decisions that are sitting there in front of you, or maybe a decision you've been holding off on making, and you're just like, I just don't know. Even if you don't feel like you have everything you need to make the final decision, take, take this advice. Go for a walk, get out in nature if you can, go on a bike ride if you have one, <laughs> and take the time to be alone and be quiet. And just listen, write down your thoughts, right? Write down the things that come to you, write down the questions as you go thinking about this problem or this decision that needs to be made. And see, see what happens. What do you have to lose? right? What do you have to lose? But I can guarantee you, you will come away. If you truly do that and disconnect, you will come away with insights. And I think you know this inherently. I think we've all seen this. Even if you don't do this constantly, I think you know. This is why people have brilliant ideas and they solve problems when they're in the shower, right? Or when they wake up, like we said, you'll wake up and you'll have solved, you know, solved a major problem. Or the weekend comes, right? You're going on Friday. It's a huge problem. You don't know what to do. Weekend comes. You take off a Saturday and a Sunday and you go do something different. You come back on Monday and for some reason, the problem doesn't seem as big. Or the answer is more clear, right? All of those different things. So try speeding up that process by taking some time on this decision that you have right now or this opportunity or whatever it might be. Take the time to step away. You can do it. I know it. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. I'd love to hear about it. Please feel free to uh, respond to one of my posts on social media or send it directly to me at Clint, C-L-I-N-T, at flavoroflevership.com. I would love to hear about things. Or you can go ahead and leave those as a review on iTunes. Is another fantastic place. We appreciate that. Um, I do read those whenever they come up. I love seeing the new reviews. So if this podcast has been helpful to you, please also consider leaving a review. You take the time right now and it would be so helpful for other people to find the show. Thank you for being here today. And I cannot wait to be back with you next week. Thanks for joining me on this week's episode of the Flavor of Leadership podcast. If you enjoyed what you heard, please share it with a friend. And if you haven't already, subscribe, rate, and review the show on your favorite podcast player. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback for us, you can reach me directly at flavoroflevership.com. Thanks for listening.